Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Designers. And today we're taking a look at a designer who's really well known for a couple games, but he's been in the business for a really long time and that is Alan Moon. Al Moon is really responsible for a lot of the growth that gaming has seen. He was one of the first uh, designers to, to kind of push back and do more in the community. In fact, his gathering of friends, which he holds every year, that has kind of faded into not as, you know, as important of an event as it was. But in the 90s, the gathering of uh, friends was a place where designers and publishers met together and some other people, basically Alan Moon's friends, and they showed games off and it was really kind of an industry event. A lot of news came out there. News comes from a lot of other places now, but the gathering of, event of friends is still a place where a lot of these connections and things are made. Al Moon also started his own board gaming company, uh, and many of the games were his own. He kind of put in hard work in a sense. He he kept publishing these games. None of these games did fantastic, although Elfenland uh, did win, win the Spiel des Jahres, uh, or Elfen Rose, I'm sorry. The, the, one of them is the larger version of the other one. And so things kept going wrong until he made the game Ticket to Ride, where that just kind of blew the doors open and made him one of the most famous game designers in the world. So I, I like his games. His games are never that complex. They're very straightforward, medium weight games usually. And they're a lot of fun and many of them are still in my collection. So here's a list of my 10 favorite games from Mr. Alan Moon. Number 10 is Where's Bob's Hat? Now, uh, Bob's Hat is a trick-taking game, or Where's Bob's Hat? I mean, it's a, I, I like the whole thing about hats. That's the theme of the game. And there's only three suits in this game, and you're basically trying to say how many suits you're going to take. There's a lot of games that do this. This one does it in a very simple, fun way. Where's Bob's Hat? Number nine is Andromeda. Now, Andromeda was known for having the ashtray, the cosmic ashtray. It didn't really have an ashtray, but what it had was a device, and I've never seen this in a game before where you would have a bunch of cubes on a planet, and then you put this cup over these cubes, shake it up, and pull it back until a cube came out of the cup, and or a certain number of cubes came out of the cup, and then those cubes were the ones that will score points or what have you. It's a pretty interesting idea. The game was about collecting sets. It was a space game theme back when space was not popular at all, but it is a fun game. Number eight is Capital. Capital was marred uh, with its production, and this is not the only time you're gonna see Al Moon uh, where his, the the goodness of his game marred by the production values. But this one had a scoring track where you slid these towers underneath the scoring thing. I didn't have any problems with it, but I can see a lot of people did not like that. But this game was one where you were building different two and three story buildings, wooden blocks all over the board, trying to have different ones in the different areas and get points. It was a really good solid game. Uh, number seven is Time Pirates. Time Pirates is a fun game, the theme at least. It's, you know, pirates going through time. Again, the box cover art and everything did not do wonders for this game, but you were going through time collecting sets of artifacts. That's not really that strong of a theme, really, in the long run of things, but the game itself was fun to jump around and grab the different sets. There's a lot of set collection games. This was one of the first ones that really kind of, I felt, did a good job of just distilling it down to its basic themes. Uh, time Pirates. Number six is Oasis. And this game kind of did not get a huge buzz, I think partially because it came from Uberplay. And when this came out, Uberplay was kind of just going <laughs> shooting games at the wall, per se. But this one was a really solid game. In this game, you were making... The, the, the game itself is very abstract, dry theme. Uh, and you are placing uh, tiles on the board and, and, and with camels and things and trying to get points in different ways. But the main mechanism of the game is you are playing a card and making an offer to other players, and they are going to take you're going to take someone else's card. Someone's going to take yours and do that. And it was a really cool concept, a little bit cutthroat actually, fairly interactive. That's Oasis. Number five is Clippers. This is the most egregious one where the production killed the game. Clippers is a really solid game of connecting roots on a board, which is uh, interesting. You know, kind of a similar theme that Alan Moon does with a lot of things, and. And then places are going to score points for the more of the different countries that are connected to them, the ports. So if you claim a port early, that's great. But if you're probably not going to have a lot of uh, countries connect to it, you can claim a port later on in the game and get more points. But it's probably been taken by somebody else. So a little bit of push your luck. Just really like this game. But it had such tiny little tokens. I mean, we're talking about tokens you would normally think, oh, those are thrown away. They're garbage. And that kind of ruined the uh, how well this game was received. But it is a great game. 
Number four is the 10 day series. Al Moon did a lot of different little games that he uh, co-designed with Aaron Weisblum and the 10 day series is a good example of that. Uh, they started out with 10 days in the USA, 10 days in Africa, and then there were many other versions, 10 days in Europe, 10 days in South America, 10 days in Asia. Um, I think maybe there was just five. And then I know they did a, a, a separate, somewhat more complicated one in Europe. And I, there was even a way that you could mix these together, but it was a really simple game. You have 10 cards, 10 tiles, and you need to get them in order where they all connect, or there's an airplane that connects two that are the same color. Very easy game, a great gateway game from Out of the Box Publishing. I love these games a lot. Number three is uh, one I mentioned already on when I talked about the best of Bruno Fiduti. He and Alan Moon went together and made Diamant which later came out as Ink and Gold. This simple game of push your luck. You know, how much farther are you gonna go into the temple and grab these gems, or are you gonna flip over another card and find uh, two of the same disaster and then you get nothing. It is the, the most simple distillation of push your luck. I think that's in a game. It works really well, takes a big number of players, just a lot of fun all around. Number two is Airlines Europe. Now I didn't put Union Pacific on this list because Airlines Europe uh, kind of is the same game. Union Pacific was the first game that was a train and they couldn't remake it because the Union Pacific company kind of put the kibosh on that. Uh, but the Union Pacific, uh, Airlines Europe was the same thing just in, in Europe. And this is like a stock market game where you are slowly building up these airlines and also collecting stock in the airlines. And so you're trying to collect stock in the ones that you think will grow bigger, and you're also trying to grow yours at the same time, and you have to pick each turn whether you're gonna grow or take stock, and so there's some back and forth on that. It is a fantastic game, one I still play, one of my high, most highly rated games, actually. And number one, was there any doubt here, is the Ticket to Ride series. Honestly, when you go through the list, I mean, I, I kept Ticket to Rides together because I would have said Ticket to Ride, Ticket to Ride Europe, Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries, Ticket to Ride uh, Markland, you know, all the different maps, Pennsylvania, UK, India, Africa. Oh, there's so much for this game and I could have split this all up and it would have taken over the whole list. I put it together. But this game, Ticket to Ride, put not only Alan Moon, but it also put the company that made it Days of Wonder on the map and has sold millions of copies for good reason. Taking the very simple concept of rummy to some degree, collecting cards and playing cards and sets and connecting trains, it just works. It is a fantastic game, can be played very casually, can be played cutthroat, uh, was not hurt for sure by having a great online version come out, but it just, it is his pinnacle of designing for me. So great games from Alan Moon. Uh, if you ever meet him, he's a super friendly guy too, always willing to talk about his games. Um, and so there you go, my favorite games from Alan Moon. You've been watching the best of designers on the Dice Hour. I'm Don Basil.